Uh, so last time we talked about the structure of the atom and how um, Thomson figured out there were electrons in all atoms and Rutherford figured out the location of the protons and later on Chadwick, like in the 30s, figured out the number of neutrons. So you guys know and we all know that there are protons, electrons, and neutrons as the three subatomic particles in an atom. So if we look at a square on the periodic table, you are at least going to see these three things. You're going to see an integer. You're going to see the symbol for the element. You may see its name, but you're at least going to see the symbol. And you're going to see this non-integer number. And you may see other things, but you're going to see at least those three. Uh, so what are these numbers? Uh, this number here is the number of protons, or what is known as the atomic number. Okay, so the integer value that you see in any element square is going to be the number of protons, otherwise known as the atomic number. This non-integer value is something called the average atomic mass, which we will get to next time. Okay, so we have the atomic number, the symbol for the element, and the average atomic mass. Um, so the atomic number, which is always, always, always an integer, okay, this is not the atomic number, people always get this messed up, it's the integer value, is the number of protons in an element. Uh, so I'm just going to do something. Oh, so the atomic number is what defines an element. Okay, that's really important. The number of protons or the atomic number defines an element. So if I tell you I have an element with an atomic number of six, I am talking about carbon. That's all I have to tell you is six. If I tell you you have an atomic number of eight, we're talking about oxygen. If you have a periodic table, you can connect the atomic number with the identity of the element. Can it change? Can carbon go from six to seven protons? An atomic, an atomic number of six to seven? No, it can't. Something with an atomic number of six is carbon. Sorry if you can't read that, but it says carbon. Something with an atomic number of seven is nitrogen. So when you change the number of protons, you automatically change the element. Um, don't forget that, because it's super important for solving all kinds of problems. Um, so there is another number which helps us to identify an element, and it is known as the mass number. Okay, the mass number is also an integer, and it is the sum of the protons plus the neutrons. Okay, pl protons plus neutrons. Those are the heavy guys. Uh, somewhere later I have that you don't count the electron in the notes, and that's because an electron is about one two thousandth the weight of either the proton or the neutron. These two are pretty close in mass. So if these both had a mass of one unit, one for the proton, one for the neutron, the mass of the electron would be one over 2,000. So it's super tiny. Um, the average atomic mass, this thing you saw up here, the 12.01, is not an integer. And it is, take a deep breath because you have a lot to write, the weighted average of all the isotopes of an element. Okay, average atomic mass, the weighted average of all the isotopes of an element. Now, I don't know if you remember weighted averages, but they take into account what percent of something there is. Like if we did a weighted average of, um, oh gosh. Whoa. Never mind. I was thinking if we did an average, a weighted average of people in the classroom with blue, green, and brown eyes. You know, we could figure out what percent had brown eyes, what percent had green eyes, what percent had blue eyes, and then we would average their weights together and could figure out a weighted average based upon eye color for the people in the classroom. Not that we would want to do that, but it is possible. Okay, so if electrons aren't involved, um, because they're too light to matter, what is changing this average atomic mass? What's making it go up and down? 
or what is causing there to be isotopes. Okay, so the protons cannot change if we're talking about a particular element, but the neutrons can change. So when we have an isotope, hmm, didn't write that down on the next page. Isotopes are atoms of an element that vary in their mass number or vary in their number of neutrons. Okay, so isotopes of an atom, isotopes are atoms of an element that vary in the number of neutrons. Okay. So let's see how we denote isotopes. Okay, here we have um, a symbol for the element, any element, I'm gonna use X. And in the upper left-hand corner, is the mass number. In the bottom left-hand corner is the atomic number. Uh, these other two areas up here, this section is left for the charge if you have an element, you know, if you have an ion rather. And uh, down here when we're writing um, elemental symbols, we would put, uh, you know, nothing if it was a one, but two if it was a diatomic element, or if it was an element in a compound, uh, but generally, you're just going to have these three corners occupied. Mass number on top, atomic number on the bottom, and charge on the bottom with the symbol of the element. So, for instance, if I am looking <clears throat> at carbon, carbon happens to have three isotopes, but right now I'm looking at carbon-12. I can write carbon-12 as a superscript and a carbon and a subscript 6. Sorry, that was a superscript 12. Or I can write a superscript 12, a carbon, and no 6. So why don't I need the six? Why are both of these equally good numbers or good symbols to write? Um, they're equally good symbols because I know that every single carbon in the world has six protons. That says all C have six P plus. All carbons have six protons. That does not say cam or anything that's carbon. Um, I can't change this number, so I don't really have to put it because I am assuming, and the author of the book is assuming, that you know this and that you have a periodic table if to look it up if you don't know it. So if I have carbon-12, how many neutrons are in one atom? Well, we know the mass number equals the sum of the protons plus neutrons, so I know the mass number is 12, equals the protons, which is 6, plus the neutrons, so 12 minus six equals the number of neutrons, which in fact equals six for this particular element of carbon. Okay, so let's do one more problem, which isn't too terribly difficult. Uh, we've got barium, and I've just told you that barium has a mass number of 138, and I wanna know how many neutrons it has. So you're gonna to go to the periodic table, and you're going to find that barium has 56 protons. Again, mass number is protons plus neutrons. <coughs> so the mass number is 138. I've just looked up the protons, so I have 138. Oh, and I've rearranged the equation to solve for the neutrons. So 138 minus 56. And if I do the subtraction, that gives me 82 neutrons. Okay, so we have mass number. This is protons, and that equals neutrons. <clears throat> this is one of my favorite chapters to teach because everybody gets it and it's fun. We've got one more page with a couple little charts to fill out. Okay. Now I said before, carbon had uh, three isotopes. There's carbon-12, 13, and 14. Carbon-14 is used for radiocarbon dating, so if you've taken biology, you know that. And I just want to fill out this chart. Here are the isotopes of carbon. Protons, this is supposed to be electrons here, I messed it up the first time, and neutrons. <clears throat> we know that for a neutral atom, um, protons and electrons have to be the same. And I know the protons on all of these carbons are six because I've just looked it up on the periodic table, 
And I've been boring you with it for the last 10 minutes. So six, six, and six. That was so hard. Um, now, I know that the electrons have to equal the protons because these are atoms, not ions. So again, six, six, and six. Okay. Now, how about this? I want to know the neutrons. Neutrons are mass number minus protons. 12 minus six is six. Neutrons for carbon 13, 13 minus six gives you seven. Mass number, excuse me, neutrons for carbon 14, 14 minus six gives you eight. See, isn't that fun? Okay, I think it's fun. Um, now hydrogen's kind of funky. Let's do hydrogen. Hydrogen is the first element on the periodic table. It has one proton. So this is proton. H2 is called deuterium. It has its own name. Whoops. D-E-U-T-E-R-I-U-M. And hydrogen three is called tritium. Your book calls hydrogen one protium, but nobody calls it that, but I know they just call it hydrogen. Okay, but these are all, and these are all isotopes of hydrogen. So they all have one proton. Yay. All right, how many electrons do they have? Well, there's no charge up here, meaning they're all neutral. So they all have to have one electron. See, I told you this was easy. Now, the number of neutrons. Let's go backwards. Tritium, or hydrogen three. Uh, its number of neutrons, mass number, minus the protons, that gives me two neutrons. Deuterium, or hydrogen two. Mass number is, excuse me, the neutrons are two minus one, or one. And regular old hydrogen, most of our hydrogen, uh, the number of neutrons is the mass number minus the proton, minus the protons, and that gives you zero. So hydrogen is the only element with no neutrons. How about that? That's kind of exciting. And if you have a hydrogen ion where you've taken away one electron, you are left with a single proton. So H plus is a bare naked proton all by itself. This is super important to know for the rest of your lives. I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you at all. Um, so isotopes of carbon, isotopes of hydrogen, deuterium and tritium have their very own name, hydrogen's really special, and that's it.